back to floating head technology. The floating head is almost in serious need of a haircut like many people and someone borrowed my clippers. So let's go ahead and talk this week about RL parallel circuits. That's not true, my bad. RLC parallel circuits, okay? And to do this, let's go ahead and recap a little bit about parallel circuits okay, that have reactive components in them, all right? So, if I have an RL parallel circuit, which is what you're seeing here, you'll remember that your phase angle is in negative based upon the phase between your voltage total and your current total, okay? The inductive circuit will actually end up forcing that current to lag, okay? which is the opposite of a RL series circuit, okay? Now, if you recall, this was a while, while ago, an RC parallel circuit, what we have here is our phase angle is in the positive, okay? Meaning that our current is leading our voltage, all right? And again, as you guys recall for both of these, um, you know, if it's more resistive, it's between negative or zero and negative 45. If it's more inductive for this one, we are uh, between negative 45 and 90. For our C parallel circuits, if we're more resistive, okay, if our R is bigger than our X of C, we're between zero and 45 degrees. And if it's our, and, and our, if it's more capacitive, meaning our X of C is larger than our R, we're between 45 and 90 degrees, okay? Now, how does this work in an RL parallel circuit? Well, it works the opposite of how an RLC series circuit works, which is the pattern that we've been seeing. Okay, so in a parallel circuit, okay, voltage is the same across any of them. And I personally think this makes the math a lot easier because each component is, ind is independent of each other. The, really, the only three factors that are affected by every component are is the impedance total, Z, okay, which would then have an effect on the current total and your apparent power. These are the only three things that all three components are required to understand to get them. If you're figuring out anything about an individual branch, you can completely ignore the other one, which I think makes the math so much easier, okay? So, um, in a parallel circuit, all right, well, in a series circuit, okay, uh, current is in phase, voltage is out of phase, okay? In a parallel circuit, voltage is in phase, current is out of phase, all right? Reactive currents cancel each other out like the voltages canceled each other out. That uh, we said X total, or we use the term uh, voltage LC, okay? This will be current CL. Okay, you could use LC if you wanted to. We'll kind of discuss that here in a little bit. All right, so for our purposes of our lecture today, we are going to be think, assuming one resistor, one capacitor, one inductor. All right, so let's get started with this math. If you haven't already, get your calculators out and get your formula sheets out. We got a new box here you can identify as RLC. Oops. Parallel. Ah, my handwriting's so bad, we'll just leave it at that. All right. <laughs> Sorry, here. Nah, maybe I'll be uh, right with it. Okay. Sorry, writing at the top of this is pretty tough. I'm sorry. So, RLC parallel circuits. Okay. In a parallel circuit, nothing has changed as far as the golden rule. Voltage is the voltage is the voltage in a parallel circuit. So each branch gets the exact same amount of voltage. Okay? This is important. Okay? This is really, really important. So uh, it makes the math, at least in my you know, subtle opinion, much, much easier. So the main thing we need to calculate out is our currents. Okay? And there's some steps in doing that. First of all, you're going to have to calculate out your 
x of c and your x of l. Okay. Notice I'm not putting z on here yet. There are a couple ways to calculate out z just with x of c and just with x of l, but the math is atrocious. Okay. I find it to be very, very tough. And um, you guys can go ahead and, you know, well, I guess I'll do it because I told you I would. Okay. Here's our formula for x of l. Here's our formula for inductive or capacitive reactants. We got our inductive reactants, capacitive reactants. Okay. And you guys should have those memorized by now for sure. Okay. So typically then the next step is going to be to calculate the individual currents. Okay. All right. And so let's talk about how we do that because it's basically Ohm's law. Okay. So we're going to come here. I R is going to equal your voltage total over your R. Okay. Your resistor. Okay. Basic Ohm's law. All right. I L, okay, is going to be your voltage total divided by X of L. All right. And so that's why you have to make sure you calculate that X of L out. And that's always the first step in these typically anyway. So, uh, you know, especially in this class. All right. Um, and then we are going to have our voltage total for our uh, current through our capacitive branch, X of C. Okay. Now, the next formula that I'm, so that's how you figure out all those currents. And once you have those, you are now ready to move on to your, uh, uh, your currents, okay? Now, you can see the current formula right here, but I want to take a little bit of a step before that, okay? So, um, what I like to do is I like to call this x c of l if you want or i c of l i'm so sorry i c of l if you want to write that as lc that's fine i lc that's fine but basically the idea here is is this is the current through um i c minus the current through l okay and the reason i put capacitors first is because if it's more capacitive that helps my phase angle to be my phase angle to be positive Okay, if it's more inductive, it will be negative and it will become more negative. Now it says use the absolute value of IL minus IC, always a positive number. But then it makes you remember that if it's more inductive, it is negative. I think this formula here takes the confusion out of that a little bit. Again, just my personal opinion. You guys should become very comfortable with these. And so uh, do whatever you feel is best. So now, for our next formula, it is our I total. You can write the one down right here if you want. It's totally legit. The one that I'm going to write down is this. IT equals the square root of uh, your current through your resistor squared plus ICL squared. Okay. All right. And so that's why I like this step right here. Okay. Because then it allows us to make the current total a little easier. If you want to write this formula down and use it, very cool. Totally cool. Okay. Um, but if not, then don't worry about it necessarily so much. Okay. So then how do we get Z? Okay. Because we're not doing the inverse, you know, or the the inverse relationships and things like that and ah to me the easiest way to get z is to take your voltage total divided by your i total now if you want to use another formula that you can find online feel free but they're a nightmare and i don't like using them okay this is the most straightforward way to do that okay and then the next step is going to be to find the phase angle, okay? Now, the phase angle here, okay, is going to be the inverse tangent of I, they have it as X, okay? I have it as CL over the current through R, and that will find your phase angle, 
Okay, if you wanted to call this IX, that's totally fine. We just can't use IT because that would look like total, like we did in some of the uh, X of L and X of C uh, subtractions in a series circuit where we just had X total there. Um, you know, I don't like that. I don't, you know, IX is fine, but I think this is a little more descriptive, the IC and IL. Okay, all right. And so this is the formula for doing this, okay? This is how we get the phase angles here, okay? Sound good? Um, all right, so parallel circuits, just like series circuits that have all three different types of components, do have a resonance where the current through the capacitor and the current through the inductor cancel each other out, okay? When we are at resonant frequency, just like the voltages across the capacitor and inductor canceled each other out when it was in a series circuit, okay? So, series still listening. Um, so ideally, in a parallel resonant circuit, they're cancel each other out, the circuit is purely resistive, okay? Note, the IC is out of phase with IL when they are algebraically added together, okay? This is what is happening in that circuit, okay? To calculate out the resonant frequency, okay? It, sorry. To calculate out the resonant frequency here, okay? It is the same formula. Okay, it's the same formula. So it is 1 over 2 pi square root LC. Okay, and so let's go ahead and give that a practice because I know all these other ones, we basically have done those, and I'll do an example using all of this math for sure. But um, let's go ahead and run this one through there. So this is um, 680 microfarad. So I'm going to use point. Zero 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 eight six times fifteen nano. Okay, so that is uh, nano is to the nine. So it's point one two three four five six seven one five equals. I will take the square root of this. I will multiply it by pi. I will multiply it by two. I will hit the equal sign. And then I will hit the inverse. And I'm coming up with 50, about 50,000. Uh, let's see how we can, let's see if that's right. Hey, it is. All right. <laughs> I did it right. I was worried maybe I missed a zero there for a second. So no, that's great. So right around 50,000 uh, hertz or 50 kilohertz, or if you want to be precise, 49.8 kilohertz. Um, our, so what, what does that mean? What does that number give us? That gives us at this time, um, uh, that the current here and the current here essentially subtract each other out, okay? So I, C will subtract I, L, and they will have that same value. So our I total, okay, is equal to our current through our resistor, okay? at resonant frequency, okay? And just like that, our power factor is still very high, and I'm gonna make another video on power factor, getting a little more explanation about what the heck fire that is, okay? Now, in an, that these are all for an ideal circuit, and this takes, this does, when we use um, this formula here, we are not counting in a number of factors, in particular, the Q factor, okay? And so um, we're not going to worry about this because there's a lot of steps in this and we are dealing with a theoretical class. So we are going to be dealing with this concept of using it as ideal. But if you wanted to get very specific on this, let's say you decided to start building uh, filters for speakers or something like this, understanding the Q factor may become a little more important. Okay. And next week we will start talking about filters. All right. And we will start understanding how and why we use different filters to control frequencies. Okay. And so um, this is what we refer to as a tank circuit. Okay. And we'll discuss all of that and talk a little bit more about it next week. 
Okay, so again, let's go ahead and review what the heck fire and why uh, resonance is so important. And then after that, I'm going to run through the power calculations real quick for you. So when we are at when we are at resonant frequency, capacitive inductance are basically equal, meaning that your X of L and X of C would actually be equal. Okay, so the total impedance is at maximum. Okay, ideally it would be at infinite, so it wouldn't affect the circuit. Okay, there would be no difference if you just, at resonant frequency, you would hope that the exact, if you just unplug the capacitor and the inductor, nothing in the current total would change. Okay, we'll see if that happens in real life though. Uh, the current is at minimum because our resistance is maxed out. Okay, it's a resistive circuit. It's a parallel circuit, remember? So if I unplug things, my resistance goes up because my current goes down. These laws all still apply. They're laws for a reason, okay? The phase angle between uh, your voltage source, your voltage total, and your current total are per air at zero, okay? So your power factor is at one, okay? And so, uh, again, this is very important, all right? Um, and this is what we, this is, very, very important. And we'll talk about why that is for power in the next lecture. Okay. And I think that is it for the PowerPoint now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up, uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. And I want to go through the rest of our formulas. Okay. That we need. And there's really nothing new here. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. And again, I'm walking through an example in the next uh, video. So um, my PX is going to be uh, the voltage total times ICL. Okay, all right, and this would be equal to VAR. Then we have. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of this right here. Let's scoot it over, yes. Oh, there we go. Um, our PR is our voltage total times IR, okay? And that is in watts. <laughs> watts that? <laughs> Still funny. I don't know how. And then we have our apparent power, okay, which is our voltage total times our current total. And this would be in VAs, all right? And then our power factor here, okay, is going to equal our PR over our apparent power power. And again, we'll discuss that a little bit more in the next lecture, okay? So, uh, or in the next the next video that we talk about. It'll be a little extra for anybody who's really interested in it. So, this is just a little bit about um, uh, the calculations in a parallel circuit that has a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor, okay? Parallel RLC circuit. All right. And so thank you for watching. I will, I'm going to create some examples here and we will walk through them. All right. Thank you.